Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It's Wednesday, December 18th, 2013, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. While talks of arms buildup have been intensifying between global superpowers in recent weeks, just last week we reported that defense analysts were warning the U.S. that it needed to prepare for war with China by building up its defense systems even further. And now Russia is talking about building its own rail-mounted nuclear missile system in response to missile systems that the U.S. is planning on building there. They say work will begin on the project early next year, and the benefits of having a rail-mounted program include the ability to camouflage their missile amidst commercial rail traffic, which would make them harder to locate and target. Now, Russia's military buildup is a response to Washington's plans to complete a project to install a missile defense system in Poland by 2018 while another ballistic missile defense system that the U.S. has already been working on in southern Romania is expected to be operational by 2015. Now, last week, Russian President Putin vowed to never allow any power to gain military superiority over Moscow, and the Russian prime minister echoed that assertion in response to the U.S. missile shield, saying, bear in mind, if we're attacked, we will respond with nuclear weapons. And China seems to have a response of its own to the U.S. missile defense system there in Romania. The, a display that was promoting China's Jade Rabbit Moon rover, it includes a background photograph of a mushroom cloud over Eastern Europe. And some are speculating that the location eerily matches that of the planned U.S. missile defense system in Romania. Now, some are saying that the selection of the image was just an oversight by Chinese officials, considering it's a stock image. However, the title of the stock image is Nuclear Explosion on Earth from Space. And as we previously highlighted, Chinese state media itself has bragged that the moon landing program is merely just their first step toward a Death Star moon base from which the People's Liberation Army could launch missiles against any target on Earth. And this is, of course, in addition to a map that the Chinese state-run media showed last month that showed locations of major U.S. cities and how they would be affected by a nuclear attack via submarine. So who knows if it's just superpower political posturing, but no one can deny that with the tensions running so high that the threat of a new Cold War and all of the psychological warfare that goes along with it is definitely upon us. Now, uh, in October, Alex Jones interviewed ex-Navy SEAL Benjamin Smith, who said that he believed that the U.S. government was trying to provoke veterans into a situation that would incur martial law. Well, the way that the Senate has continued to, to, to treat military retirees, especially this week, could definitely be seen as another poke at vets as well. The Senate Republicans were unable to stop military pension cuts on Tuesday night when the Senate Democrats blocked a vote on an amendment that would prevent those cuts. Alabama Republican Jeff Sessions said on Monday that removing this unbalanced treatment of our military retirees ought to be one of the key actions that we should take before this legislation moves forward. And in fact, greater savings than this can be achieved by passing a legislative fix that would stop the IRS from improperly providing tax credits to illegal aliens. But of course, the Democrats weren't going to have that. Now, additionally, Sessions wanted to restore the pension cuts by targeting a child tax credit loophole that's being used by illegal immigrants to unlawfully obtain welfare benefits. We are talking about $4.2 billion that were refunded to ineligible people in 2010 alone. But instead, Reed's majority just voted to keep pension cuts for vets instead of cutting the welfare payments to illegal aliens. So there you go, folks. I mean, obviously, I definitely respect the military. I know you guys are fighting for me and my family and everyone here in America to retain our rights. But the fact is, <laughs> they want to send you over to fight the rich man's war and don't expect that if and when you make it back, you or your family is going to be taken care of. It's, it's disgusting. No wonder Obama couldn't start a war with Syria, because the morale of the mil military is so low. And this is only going to increase that anger and frustration with Obama and his administration even further. This is, is absolutely disgusting, the way that they're treating our veterans. Now, the NSA uh, is also making enemies all over the world. 
In the latest heated exchange uh, with Obama, the German Chancellor Angela Merkel has compared the snooping practices of the U.S. with those of the Stasi. Now, Merkel was particularly angry that, based on the disclosures, the NSA clearly couldn't be trusted with private information because they let Snowden clean them out. Now, the disclosure that Merkel's mobile phone had been monitored was a decisive moment in the NSA leaks, which prompted a parliamentary inquiry to discuss the legality of the NSA's operations. But a judge here in the U.S. has already declared that the NSA's activities are unconstitutional, most likely. And so, of course, that prompted the Obama's administration watchdog, CNN, to attack the legal activists that brought this case against the NSA. CNN host Don Lemon preceded the interview with Larry Klayman with an attack profile that included a quotation from former George W. Bush a staffer saying that Clayman's lawsuits were about fighting for himself and his own delusions of grandeur. This set Clayman off immediately, who called out the host for being an ultra-leftist Obama supporter who now has to do a hit piece to diminish a very important decision. And the reality is, let's talk about the NSA. Let's not talk about Larry Clayman. This victory is for the American people. It wasn't for me. And you, as somebody from the left, and I've gotten more compliments from the left in the, in the last few days and even from the right, should appreciate that you don't have a police state in this country that's going to be able to intimidate Americans, to chill their free speech rights, their associational rights. The NSA has data on all of us, metadata, which deals with our personal lives. It's clearly a violation of the Fourth Amendment. But rather than talking about that, you've got to try to take out somebody who's challenged President Obama. And I'll stand by everything I've said and everything I've done. Listen, People Larry, I'm not website. here. CNN went on to show their true colors by removing Clayman from the screen after that for expressing views that they didn't agree with. Now, Clayman did say to Lemon that he should feel lucky that we're not living in a police state, but NSA whistleblower William Benny, Benny is the man who created the agency's mass surveillance program for digital information and who just last year said we're this close to a turnkey totalitarian state, well, today, Benny told Washington's blog that the U.S. has indeed already become a police state. And someone who may agree with that statement is India's deputy consul in New York City. She experienced the police state firsthand. The people of India are now outraged after one of their diplomats was strip searched in New York City. And not only was she strip searched, but also cavity searched. And what is this horrendous crime that this woman committed? It's that she didn't pay her housekeeper enough money, according to USA Today. A spokeswoman for the U.S. State Department had this to say on the issue. The U.S. and India enjoy a broad and deep friendship, and this isolated episode is not in any way indicative of the close and respectful ties that we share. Well, I'm glad to see that this isn't common for people from India, but it is common for our citizens right here in the United States of America. As you may recall, we here at InfoWars have given you numerous articles about people being harassed at roadside checkpoints. This is just the most recent. Pennsylvanians coerced into giving cheek swabs at, quote, voluntary checkpoint. And these things are not voluntary. They have these no refusal DUI weekends right here in the city of Austin, as well as many other places in the U.S. I noticed a woman walking to my vehicle. Uh, naturally, I rolled down my window. And uh, with that being said, uh, she told me I was not being cited. She told me that I was not being pulled over. However, that she wanted to ask me a few questions about my driving behaviors and habits and take a uh, mouse swab and that she would pay me for this. Um, naturally, I said no. She came back to me and said, listen, I understand this is voluntary. However, and she went back into her sales pitch again, you know, telling me that she would like to ask me about my driving. Yeah, habits. you're being racketeered. You're being pressured. Right. And in addition to these checkpoints, we've also seen victims cavity searched roadside. Stay tuned to InfoWars.com for more reports. Oh, it's happening. While you're busy watching the NFL, while you're busy into your favorite music star, while, while you're busy watching your favorite sitcom, we're under total siege. We're under the beginnings of real martial law. And Alex Jones is exactly right. That is how this police state and this 
turnkey totalitarian state has gotten so out of hand because everyone is so distracted by their NSA Stasi devices. Like this tourist right here, she took a long walk off a short pier. She was so distracted by her Facebook feed that she fell into the water. And then when police finally arrived to rescue the woman, who couldn't swim, mind you, she was still clutching her mobile device in her hand. Oh, God help us all. Well, coming up, David Knight is going to give you a warning about something else that you need to be concerned about that's in your water. Introducing Pro One. All of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals, all in one filter element. It is the only one that does it and out of the gates, we have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia, and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. Get your Pro Pure with a new Pro One filter today at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. My friends, Alex Jones here to tell you about some of the most important information concerning you and your family's health. Radiation levels have more than doubled in the last 60 years in the Northern Hemisphere from all of the nuclear testing and radiological accidents. Radioactive contamination is now in most of the food supply. There's only two ways to avoid this. Move south of the equator or properly protect your thyroid with nascent iodine. Looking to protect my family, I've done deep research. Nascent iodine is the purest, cleanest, absolute best form of iodine to protect yourself and your family. It's made right here in the USA, completely non-GMO. I searched out the best quality and now have developed a double strength form of nascent iodine, exclusively available at InfoWarsLife.com. Nascent iodine is on record as one of the only safe ways to detox from fluoride poisoning. Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Secure your super high quality nascent iodine today at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Well, you already know that they're adding fluoride to the water, but you're going to be amazed to find out what else water treatment facilities aren't removing, and instead it's finding its way into rivers and groundwater. Western society loves to sweeten nearly everything we eat and drink, and even after wastewater treatment, sweeteners are showing up in elevated levels in both rivers and in drinking water. Not sugar, but artificial sweeteners, which persist even after waste treatment, some of them being found 300 kilometers away. It's not known yet what effect high concentrations of artificial sweeteners are having on aquatic life, but we do know how other things showing up in the water are affecting them. Prozac and Zoloft are showing up in the waterways for the same reasons, and even in small concentrations, they're making fish antisocial, aggressive, and homicidal. The same effect it has on kids who take it and then go out and shoot up a school. It's affecting architectural changes to the brains of the minnows, and it's causing shrimp to take risks in ways that are suicidal. The same thing happens to humans, and studies have shown that regular doses of SSRIs can sometimes damage human DNA. The minnows offer evidence that even trace amounts of SSRIs can infiltrate DNA. Specifically, 324 genetic alterations associated with neurological disorders like autism and that's after being exposed for only 18 days. Consider what these drugs are doing to humans who take them longer and in higher doses. In 2008, the water supplies of 24 major cities in the U.S. were known to be contaminated with drug residues even after water treatment. Most treatment plants don't even test for pharmaceuticals as it's not typically required by law. Of course, not only does wastewater treatment not remove many artificial sweeteners or synthetic pharmaceuticals, 
The treatment facilities are then also adding fluoride to the water as a mass medication. It's important to opt out of taking SSRIs like Prozac and Zoloft and to realize that you may be taking them even when you drink water. The only way to make sure that you're not drinking SSRIs with your water is to filter it yourself with a high quality filter. Well, we can all see the writing on the wall here. And so when is it time to jump ship? Well, we'll have the answer to that question after the break when we leave you with a very special message from Alex Jones. That's it for us tonight here on the InfoWars Nightly News. Please tune in again tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Central. The facts are in. The studies are legion. Sodium fluoride and other members of the fluorine family that are added to Western water supplies are devastating the health and cognitive ability of the people that drink it. So the question is, why are the social engineers adding it to the water? Simple, dumb down the host population that the parasitic technocracy is feeding on. We developed Fluoride Shield to be the highest quality, highest standards because I use it every day and my family uses it every single day. Let's take a closer look at the ingredients that make up this special proprietary formula. Tamarind has been celebrated for its ability to immobilize toxic fluoride residues, while zeolites have a long history of attracting and holding toxic compounds. Enter fulvic acid, an excellent cleansing agent. Then we added the highest quality shilaji, a rare compound that is collected from the high mountains of the Himalayas. We topped it all off with the powerhouse herb cilantro, that is intended to mobilize fluoride and other dangerous compounds for removal from the body. And the final touch to energize this formula is our proprietary nascent iodine. And as always, consult your physician as well because that is important. And finally, Fluoride Shield, Survival Shield, and all the products at InfoWarsLife.com grew out of my quest to try to find the very best compounds from God's cornucopia to protect myself and my family. And from our research, I believe we are bringing you the best, highest quality products. And you have that commitment from Alex Jones and the entire InfoWars crew. I'm out here in the Texas Hill Country. Been taking a pre-dawn hike in the moon that came up last night full and champagne colored is now preparing to set. You can see Austin down there in the distance. The reason I'm shooting this video is that it's at times like this that the mind is so clear and focused and crisp that I realize why I get so angry and yell and scream on the radio. And it's because I live this every single day, researching the information, knowing that I'm telling the truth. And it's very, very frustrating to just see the tyranny getting worse and worse by the minute. And to know that all the good things in the world act as a facade to basically cover up the evil that's going on right behind the scenes. And that's really the big issue, is that I know they're putting bug poison, sodium fluoride in the water to brain damage us. They admit it in their own documents, John P. Holden and others. I know they're deploying weaponized GMO to attack our fertility and our genetics and to give us cancer on record. I know that they're setting up a planetary world government and trying to dominate the future of humanity and control our destiny and shudder the future for the majority of the population of the world while trying to dumb us down. You know, in 1984, 
Winston says freedom is the ability to say two plus two equals four. And you know under Common Core, this is going on globally, they teach elementary students that two plus two can equal five or whatever they want it to. This is literally the most hardcore authoritarianism you can imagine. There's an article up on Infowars.com where in Garden City, New York, they have banned, that's banned, people washing their cars on their own private property. Washing the car and things like that, you know how to do it. On your own property? That's a law. Want to see it? Yeah. Huh. I don't make up. I ain't just driving down the street to come over here and bring your ass, okay? I got to call for my lieutenant to come over here. Water violations, Washington motor vehicles, rugs, furniture, prohibited in public place. Public this is place. a private area. This is a private place. private residential uh, yeah, this property. Yeah, like a private home. Okay, that's what you say. That's beyond martial law. Even in an authoritarian state, people can carry on about their business. They are banning under global standardization and zoning, Agenda 21, all human individual activity. It's not corporate or government sanctioned. They're attacking the family. They're arresting people that play with Nerf guns in their backyard. I mean, we're already under a martial law and it's being phased in. We have to admit it to ourselves. And we have to defend all that is good in the world against all that is corrupt. I mean, it's just that simple. And I get frustrated because we're in this learned helplessness, mass Stockholm syndrome where people have incrementally been made comfortable, like the frog in the proverbial pot, with the tyranny. And so those of us that are awake are watching it accelerate all around us and, and, and watching people be picked off one by one and watching the global empire take down all these third world countries and murder people by the millions in some cases and by the hundreds of thousands in others. And then calling it peace and, and just seeing the sick celebrity culture. And that's why I get frustrated and angry, because at a subconscious level, I feel like I'm almost part of it because I'm successful, I'm comfortable, I'm sitting here in Austin, Texas watching all this unfold, and I feel like I'm not doing enough. And I'm basically just accepting it. And I'm trying to rack my brain, what do we do that shakes people out of their trance? What do we do? How do we get people to realize how serious in life and death this is, but how it's a new kind of war, an incremental mind war, and a biological and chemical and radiological war? And that driving it is a spirit of pure evil. How do you ever get that across to people? Because they're scared deep down. Deep down, their subconscious mind knows this is all true. And so they want to deny it. I want to deny it. But it's just all manifest in front of everyone. All of it. The NSA spying, the police state, the secret prisons, the black sites, all of it. And giving into it in fear is only going to make it all come true and get that much worse. We have to admit the situation we're in. And that's why I get angry when people call up and say, oh, thank you, you're doing a great job in all this caller after caller, it's like torture. Because I don't feel like I'm doing enough. And I feel like we're all just sitting here comfortably talking about the Titanic going under while we're sitting on the Titanic. That's my point. I mean, I'm up here saying the ship is sinking, the ship is sinking. And people are saying, thank you for telling us it's sinking, but we're doing nothing. Another point that needs to be made about this incrementalism is that it's designed to capture those the lowest down on the room who are the weakest and the most unaware and to be comfortable for those up above it until it's their turn to go under the major social engineering. And again, everyone is under varying levels of the conditioning that hits from all angles, the mind warfare sciences. But it's designed to almost give comfort to those on the islands above the rising sea of dehumanization as we watch others from afar caught in the net we feel secure and thankful that our time has not yet come when in truth the net is already fast around us 
we have to admit the net is there to free ourselves from it. So that's the issue. So humanity has a big choice to make. Get off the globalist Titanic or right the ship. But there isn't a lot of time left. We're already in deep martial law at many levels. It's not coming. It's here. And we are seen as nothing but animals who don't even matter in the final equation by the globalist. And if we continue to deny that social engineering is going on, if we continue to deny what's right in front of our face, that really makes them right about us, doesn't it? We talk about the final frontier space, and it is an important frontier. And there's many other frontiers, the undersea, dimensional research, but the true final frontier is the human mind and the human spirit for us as a species. And we have to be honest about that. And we have to ask, is this a new dawn of human awakening and enlightenment, or is it really the sun setting? Well, I'm shooting this at dawn, so I hope that that's a metaphor for humans coming out of the cave and realizing that we've conquered the world to a great extent. We've conquered the saber-toothed cats, the, the big bears. We've t t conquered the lions on the African plain. But can we conquer our own twisted side? Or will we let the globalists breed us like cattle and set up the ultimate predatory system where they are the Morlocks and we are the Eloi? Is this the human race of the future? Or is this the Morlocks, fiendish creatures who live in a weird underground world? And the Eloi, the tranquil sunshine people, who the Morlocks dominate and maintain like cattle, luring them below with the hypnotic wail of the sirens to feed upon them in cannibalistic horror. Carefree Eloi, who don't even pay attention as our kinsmen are drugged to their deaths and literally fed on. By the way, H.G. Wells, author of The New World Order, admitted in radio interviews that he saw the elite as the Morlocks. So it's all a open letter to the public telling you what they're doing to you. It was H.G. Wells, to paraphrase him, that said, there's going to be a lot of beautiful, wonderful, well-meaning people we're going to have to kill to bring in our new world order. And many others have said that as well. And it's a place where these predators can basically play God. So again, it's really up to you what you're going to do. But the noose is closing very, very quickly on this planet. And it's all being done so an upper caste of social engineers can play God. So the truth is, they're just humans, just like us. In fact, they're twisted. Many of them are inbred. They've inbred psychopathic and sociopathic tendencies, aggressive tendencies, tendencies towards dominance. They understand strategy. They understand guile. They understand all the different art forms of, of dominance and oppression but they do not have a loving side and they don't have wisdom to see 20, 30 steps ahead. They have knowledge but not wisdom because if they had true wisdom and were wise, they would realize the path they're on, joining with evil, embracing evil, becoming evil, believing that they're empowered by true destruction will bring them down in the end. There's no way that the system they're setting up won't destroy them in the end. There's, there's no way they'll be able to turn it off, what they're putting in motion. So I would say again to the establishment now, turn back before it's too late. And I say that to all of humanity, because truly we are on this ship together. Alex Jones signing off.
Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at Infowars.com slash show.